How majestic is your name in all the earth? Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth? When I look up to heaven, to the sky above, everybody welcome to monday this new week of ordinary time and it's really wonderful to be with you thank you for joining us hope your weekend was great today's the feast also of saint callistus he was the pope around the year 217 and he was uh defied uh by hippolytus who was the author of the second eucharistic prayer uh, because of his unwillingness to excommunicate grave sinners who sought to confess and to do penance. Hippolytus was a little rigid in that time. He actually became a martyr himself later on. In, uh, he became an anti-pope, actually, but then uh, renounced all of that and, 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 and without a conversion, I guess, himself and became more and more uh, the thought of, of Callistus and all of this. And he's a saint himself, so he... Finally got it in some way. So we pray through the intercession of Pope Callistus I, a martyred pope, a man after God's own heart. Let's ask God through his intercession for his mercy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Again, let's ask God for his wonderful, powerful mercy. Lord Jesus, you long to heal the sick, Lord have mercy. You long to heal sinners, Christ have mercy. You long to heal those who have sinned profoundly, longing for forgiveness, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up Pope St. Callistus I to serve the church, and attend devoutly to Christ faithful departed. Strengthen us, we pray, by his witness to the faith, so that rescued from slavery of corruption, 
we may merit an uncorruptible inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the freeborn woman. The son of the slave woman was born naturally, the son of the freeborn through a promise. Now this is an allegory. These women represent two covenants. One was from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. This is Hagar. But the Jerusalem above is freeborn, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, you barren one who bore no children. Break forth and shout, you who were not in labor. For more numerous are the children of the deserted one than of her who has a husband. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are children not of the slave woman, but of the freeborn woman. For freedom Christ set us free, so stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord who lifts up servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Praise the Lord. Rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. Praise the Lord. Like the Lord our God, who looks upon the heavens and the earth below. He raises up the lowly from the dust, from the dunghill, he lifts up the poor. Raise the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so would Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them. Because she came to the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, but there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it. Because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, imagine how amazing it must have been for the Queen of Sheba to arrive in Jerusalem to meet King Solomon. The high point of Jewish political power was David slash Solomon, especially Solomon in his beginning years. During the end, it wasn't so great. She bought spices, gold, precious stones. And after she met Solomon, she said, I've never seen such wisdom, wealth, and exceeded her expectations. If only he would have been able to sustain all that. But anyway, God bless her for all of that. And here again, like Friday, uh, they are seeking a sign uh, if Jesus was everything that he claimed to be. And in complete exasperation, he tells them, I don't need any more signs. They're not getting any more signs because what he has done to this point is sign enough for all of them. His words and actions are more than enough for all of them. And so all they have to do is look back at what he's done. And then they can begin to see who Jesus really is. Remember, they're not seeking a life of faith. They are seeking certainty. And as I said before, certainty and faith don't go together. As a matter of fact, Thomas Merton said certainty is really the opposite of faith. All of this is a risk. God has kind of set it up that way. If I was arguing with a, um, an atheist, I would concede to him, I cannot in any certainty prove to you the existence of God if you will concede to me that you can't prove God doesn't exist because there's evidence. That's what Jesus is saying. There is evidence that God indeed does exist, that everything Jesus claims to be is true, but we have to walk by faith and not by sight. And aren't we guilty of the same kind of thing ourselves, looking for dramatic signs? I might get in trouble for this one. But you know, all throughout the diocese, there is this display, I did not go to see it, uh, of all these miracle, Eucharistic miracles, where oftentimes the host uh, turns into human flesh in certain ways, or blood. I, I see all this as an opposition to faith. I, I, I see all this as an opposition, or, or looking for some kind of certainty in some fashion. I don't think it has any effect on a Christian believer whatsoever. Uh, I, I don't know that it really helps anything at all. Uh, I, I may, you, know, you might disagree with me about all that, and that's just fine. You're welcome to do that. But we are to walk, when it comes to the Eucharist and the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, to walk by faith, not be a kind of certainty here. But nothing, and may I say, nothing is more miraculous than the Holy Spirit breaking into our lives and transforming us from the inside out. If you have that experience, you know it. That, I think, is the greatest miracle of them all. And in that one, also you walk by faith. I know people who had that happen to them, and they've walked away. For whatever reason, they walked away, oftentimes seeking some kind of life of comfort or, or some certainty of some fashion, as opposed to continuing the journey in a life of faith. Here's a meditation. Um, I can share with you. Um, I read it first of all in um, Magnificat years ago, and I looked it up, and I, I have it here on the phone. It's a, a letter written by a Father Alphonse Walkman. He was a priest and a university professor who sought to undermine the Nazis from the very beginning. He was arrested in 1943 and executed in February of 1944. And so he's writing a letter to his sister about his Christmas in prison without all the different trappings that kind of come along with Christmas these days. They have absolutely nothing to do with faith in any way. But, but here he is uh, in prison, 1943, Christmas 1943, and he writes this. I hope through, through grace, and by the way, I always use the word faith. Faith is our response to grace. I hope through grace and faith to celebrate Christmas deep within my heart and mind as I never have as I never had before in my life. No gifts, no festive meal will distract me, no candles will gleam, no fir tree, fir tree will emit its fragrance, not even a holy mass to, to is granted me. I wish you the grace of Christ. I wish you the faith of Christ. 
so that you may be, so you may with strength and love drink with me the myrrh that God's love offers me, the suffering. In his suffering, he has grown very, very deeply into his life of faith. So this, I think, is an example of real faith that we're talking about here. So when you are tempted and you're wondering, God, where are you? Send me a sign of some, some time. Look back at your life and take a look at it and see, you know, God was here. God, he's, he's not going to abandon me. He's never going to abandon me. And I, I say this for myself as well as saying it for all of you. Or how about this? Turn all the different stuff off. Sit still. Open your heart and listen and allow him to speak to you. And he will speak to you. And he will show you the path of faith, just like they, he did to Father Walkman as he was in prison. He showed him how to somehow walk forward in the midst of those difficult, difficult situations that he found himself in. Let's you and I, all of us here, stop seeking signs. So let's look for that intimacy with Jesus, that great miracle of them all, the Holy Spirit breaking into our lives and transforming us and making us persons of faith, as Paul mentions here. Here's my question for today. We walk by faith and not by sight. What does the statement mean to you? We walk by faith, not by sight. Thanks very much, folks, for joining me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye now.